I thought it'd be simpler, uh, excepting for myself, but as a director, of course, as I stand here, I suddenly realize I can only accept this on behalf of, of people. As directors, we, we bring people together and we try and get them to give it their, their best. This is the award I'm most excited about. Not because the best director race is exciting, but because we all know who is going to win this award. Why is this still exciting? Because I happen to be a Chris Nolan fan and all I want is to see him on the podium and get his long earned and well deserved Oscar. Even if you do not like these movies, you can't deny Nolan's got style. You may not like him, Minister, but you can't deny Dumbledore's got style. He puts everything into his movies. And ever since Memento was released way back in 2001, he has had an iconic filmography and I feel that Oppenheimer is his peak. Yes, I think it's better than The Dark Knight. I think it's better than Inception. I think it's better than Interstellar, all of which I adore deeply. Well, if it is not obvious enough, Christopher Nolan is my number one to win the Oscar. This is his best film and it would be so fitting for him to win his Best Director Oscar for this movie. He received his first Best Director nomination in 2018 with Dunkirk but lost. In my opinion, that is also a top tier Nolan movie and not enough people talk about Dunkirk. Even Tarantino said that Dunkirk was like his number two movie of the decade and that is high praise coming from someone like Tarantino. I would be shocked if Chris Nolan did not win. Let me just sidetrack a bit. I'm actually working on a video on Chris Nolan and why he is among the greatest directors of all time and not just because of his craft but how he treats people on sets, whether it's actors or actresses, cinematographers, designers, everyone. And also the fact that he never speaks anything that disrespects anyone. He never makes statements defining cinema. He never makes people feel bad for liking a certain kind of a movie. He respects his audience more than any other director working today. And that is why even more than the quality of his movies, everyone around him just loves the guy. He's never in any controversy, he's not flashy, he just goes around doing his business in a very understated way. Anyways, enough about me gushing on and on about Nolan, the video must go on, which brings me to my number 2. A couple of months back, I really thought my number 2 would battle it out with Chris Nolan for the best director win, but he seems to have lost a lot of momentum. My number 2 is Martin Scorsese for Killers of the Flower Moon. There's a sinister nature of the murders of the Osage people. Back in America to make all this go away. You know they don't happen anymore. I wanted to do justice to the Osage so that the audience feels the immensity of the tragedy. Now, I love this movie. Hell, I even made a video on why I love this movie. So I'm not on the camp of the people who think it was underwhelming. Having said that, there are many people who think that this movie is a bit underwhelming. And this is the reason he will not win the Oscar. Another reason is that Oppenheimer is just so excellent that Killers of the Flower Moon had to match Oppenheimer for Scorsese to have a chance, which it just did not. This would be an insane 10 time in Scorsese's career that he has been nominated for Best Director. He was first nominated way back in 1981 with Raging Bull. He was also recently nominated for The Irishman in 2020. It's worth noting that since 1981, it took him 26 years to win his first Best Director Oscar for The Departed in 2007. Even though he has won the Oscar just once, his nomination always seems guaranteed because he's really that good. Scorsese is my clear number two. He deserves to get nominated, but he will not win this Oscar for sure, for the reasons I just mentioned before. This brings me to my number three. My number three is Yorgos Lanthimos for Poor Things. As soon as I read the book and imagined how it would be to make it into a film, um, I immediately thought that it should be, you know, her journey and she would be the main character because in the novel she actually, I mean, she is the main character, but it, she's basically seen through other people's eyes and she's, she's described by other people. And I, I knew from the beginning that I wanted to make a film about her and she will drive it and she'll be the, the main character. There is no way that the Academy does not nominate this guy. This movie is about a woman who is resurrected and her journey to discover who she is. The movie seems to be as crazy as the trailers have suggested, but with Yorgos Lanthimos in the director's chair, you expect quality filmmaking. I have not seen Poor Things, but I'm very sure that Yorgos will get nominated. Poor Things has been a favorite of the critics ever since it debuted at the Venice International Film Festival. 
I predicted in my previous video that Emma Stone will win the Best Actress Oscar this year, and poor things will get a lot of nominations in both above the line and below the line categories. This would just be his second Best Director nomination as he received his first in 2019 for The Favorite. There is a chance that Lanthimos might pull off the upset and win this award as more and more people watch this movie. But I was more confident about the Marvels being any good than I have of this happening, which says a lot. That brings me to my number 4. I believe my number 4 is a definite lock to get nominated. I think this category is very predictable and my number 4 is Greta Gerwig for Barbie. For us, I think the thing that I I I wanted to hold to the end was actually shooting in Los Angeles because everything about this movie was so absurd and heightened and I felt like we had to stay in this protective mm. world mm. as long as we could. The biggest compliment that I can give to Greta Gerwig is that I don't think anyone could have made a Barbie movie like this. Even though as some of you might know, I'm not a big fan of Barbie, but I can't deny that Barbie is a cultural phenomena, something we have not seen for a very long time. Also, Barbie's Oscar campaign will be very strong, and there is no way Greta Gerwig won't be nominated for both best director as well as best screenplay. She managed to direct a fun movie built around a recognizable IP, but Barbie had mature themes that clearly impacted a lot of people. I believe Greta Gerwig will go down as one of the greatest directors of our generation. This will become apparent in a few years. She is that good. This would also be Greta Gerwig's second best director nomination. She received her first best director nomination for Lady Bird. Believe it or not, she would only become the second woman ever to get two best director Oscar nominations. Also, Greta Gerwig would join Jane Campion, Chloe Zhao, and Catherine Bigelow as the only women to win the award if she brings home the trophy. That's right. Throughout the history of cinema, only three women have won the Best Director Oscar. I just want to say one thing, and please hear me out when I say this: If there is a year where there are no females in the Best Director nomination, people tend to say that the Academy is sexist. There is no way you can convince me that women have gotten equal opportunities in Hollywood. They just have not. But the notion to suggest that the Academy is sexist, especially today, is just ludicrous and ridiculous. I believe that there is a problem but we are not correctly identifying the root cause of this problem. The reality is that there are very few movies that are made by female directors and that is the root cause here. Once we do get more female directors it's only natural that more women will get nominated. So it is very normal when I see a list of directors where all of them are men. It happens because the pool of movies with women directors is very small. And that is a huge hurdle Hollywood or any film industry needs to solve. Reserving a spot in the top 5 for a female director is that a solution? Hell no. I don't think even women want that. You should never make lists based on being diverse. Instead one should make sure that every person in the world gets an equal chance to show what they are capable of. And that's all I have to say about that. Moving on to my number 5. The only spot I'm a little unsure about, but for now my number 5 is Bradley Cooper for Maestro. Come on. Come on. Come on. I was more impressed about Bradley Cooper the director than I was Bradley Cooper the actor and I have Bradley Cooper winning the best actor Oscar that is how highly I rate his work on Maestro after his excellent directorial debut with A Star Is Born this is just his second turn as a director it really does not feel like that this movie feels like it was directed by someone experienced in many ways like a Greta Gerwig movie Bradley Cooper was snubbed in the best director category for A Star Is Born Is it possible that he does not get the nomination this year as well? It is possible, but right now I have him making it at number 5. People are saying that since he will get nominated for best actor, he won't get nominated for the best director as he already has an Oscar nomination. I actually disagree. Getting nominated and potentially win the best actor Oscar will only boost his chances to get nominated as best director because the love for Bradley Cooper the person and his work will permeate even more. So that was crazy and um it was baptism by fire and But I it was beautiful because I was so naked. I I felt so vulnerable. I remember really feeling like are the crew going to start laughing at me because I'm, you know, and they didn't. And and really in that that first day, we all sort of came together and I I felt like it was just a beautiful like, you know, there's no I don't there's no chairs, there's no video village on the set, so it's just everybody's right there. Also, I think Maestro will get a best picture nomination as well. And considering Bradley could potentially direct himself and Carey Mulligan to Oscar nominations, it would only be fair for him to get a nomination in the best director category as well. But this is far from certain. The number 5 spot is still up for grabs. Which brings me to my 3 honorable mentions. Alexander Payne for The Holdovers, Celine Song for Past Lives, and Kurt Jefferson for American Fiction. 
The reason I'm sticking to just three is because I'm very confident that if anyone could take that number five spot, it can only be these three. All of these movies are going to get nominated for Best Picture. One thing that I would say is to definitely watch out for Alexander Payne for the holdovers. Most important components are screenplay and casting. What I do with the cinematographer, if it's a 50 or 150, that's all important too. Not as important as screenplay and casting. And when I say 90% of directing is casting, I, I mean not just in front of the camera, but behind the camera, who your collaborators are. With them also, you want situations in which you don't have to talk much. The Holdovers is one of those movies that will grow as the Oscar season progresses. And while Oppenheimer is a clear frontrunner in most major categories, don't be shocked if a movie like The Holdovers or even American fiction create an upset. Maybe not beat Oppenheimer, but perform much better than a movie like Killers of the Flower Moon. So if you like my predictions, or even if you did not, please share your predictions in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more Oscar prediction videos.